So we've been using Adobe Build, and we see how great it is, but the catch, of course, is that we need the right certificates. And then the bigger catch is that you need an app. You need some code for it to process. Let's explore then. Hopefully by now you took a moment to install the Adobe PhoneGap software. It doesn't look like it'll take that long even if you didn't do it. But I did install it already. So it's a 0 0.3 whatever beta. They're still working on a graphical interface sort of thing. Behind the scenes to some degree it's still just going to be the command prompt. But let's explore this. And I myself haven't had a, a, a big chance to look at it very deeply either because again there's so many hours in the day. But I've installed it, and I get the that kind of that guy looks a little familiar. That's that uh, Cordova little robot square icon guy. So I have a phone gap desktop installed. If you don't see it right on your start menu, you can search down there. Just search phone gap. And it should pop up. <coughs> so then I get this. Here's Adobe's phone gap. Very, very simple. Drop a phone gap project folder here. Or I can create a project up here. Got some settings and the command prompt. So the, notice the command prompt is still um, you know, close by. Um, we've got a couple of items up here. About and quit. File, create, edit, very simple. And then, of course, what you're going to spend some a little time on is tutorials. But for us, we'll just explore this a little bit. I'll click the plus sign, add a project. Would you like to create a new project or open an existing one? Just to see how it goes from the beginning to end, I'll click create a new phone gap project. Where would you like to save it? I'll save it onto my flash drive. Create a new project. I'll call this Phone Gap One, I guess. To save something, create a folder uh, to save these assets somewhere. I'm saving it onto my flash drive with a name. So I'm selecting that folder. This is where your project will be stored. What's the name? The display name of your app, and what's your ID? Optional, which I would say it's not optional because eventually this is going to go off to an app store. It needs a unique ID. If you don't put something here, it will automatically put world. The unique identifier across the app stores. We recommend to use a reverse domain name like that. So I'm just going to say, uh, I don't know, my phone gap. And this will be com dot my last name dot my phone gap. Same sort of thing when we did this on Taco a while ago. We did Taco create my app com dot campus dot my app a while ago when we did it in the command prompt here it is in a nice pretty interface create project process it. As it's thinking about it, I'm going to open up the tutorial screen because uh, this is a different paradigm, this is a different route to get to the same destination, a cross-platform app. It's Adobe's version of it. And Summer is also... Exactly. And it was so useful that Microsoft bought them and is integrating them into Visual Studio. So yeah, many ways to, to do it. I'll talk about another one a little bit later too. Intel has a version of this too. Intel has a version to make cross-platform apps, which we'll look at later. And that's why they call this beta software, because nothing's happening. <laughs> what about you guys? Did you get any... Maybe I just need to wait a bit more. Yeah, I did open the tutorial, but yeah, it's supposed to open the browser window, but mine is 
is mine installed. So supposedly, does this get past the limitation of one? Or do you still have to? This is, this is like as if we had um, the command prompt simply of doing taco build and all of that. This is to build your app. This doesn't get past any of that limitation about one per account. This is just a way to run it, to create it. Question? Joe? Question? We're running Windows 7. We're running Windows 7, aren't we? Yeah, we're not Windows 8.1. That is true. When we were over here, it had required Windows 8. <laughs> <laughs> you got you just trusted the instructor unconditionally. Yeah, Windows 8.1. Hmm. Well, it's running, but nothing's happening. Did you guys get anything when you did something beyond that? Yeah, something beyond that. Now it's locked. Maybe because mine, I've got a lot of stuff running. So, okay, what on mine, uh, for the moment, I'm going to close my phone gap. The point of doing that is that now in your folder of your phone gap folder you should have okay so now when I did file new project in my phone gap project folder there's my phone gap and in there I've got a familiar type of structure don't I there's a config XML file WW folder so it's just a variation of doing taco create but with a nice interface Obviously, it has a few other features in, in theory, but since we've got Windows 7, it might not fully behave. Let's see if I can get mine. Just wait for my a little bit more. Yours again over here, yours changed. Maybe you see on the bottom row a set of, of green lines that have web addresses. The way this is going to work, the way that this is going to work is that you've got, so mine's kind of loading up. The way this works is that you 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 have you have in a sense a mini web server running on your computer right now. And it's giving you a web address at the bottom. What that's supposed to be then is you go with your device or web browser to that address, exactly as it is with the colon numbers, the port number. You go to that address that it's telling you on PhoneGap in your web browser to be able to, to quickly view and debug your app at this moment. So it's sort of like when we do Taco Run Android, Taco Emulate Android, we want to see it. Well, you're going to see it by following that web address. So. If I go back to the documentation, you need to install it, install the mobile app, create your project, which is what we did, and then at the bottom it's going to say there's some server running. Now, it might not fully work for you to check it on your server, I mean on your device, because this assumes that your device is on the same network as your computer. So if I'm on my laptop and I'm on my home network, and I'm on my Android phone, on my home network, we're on the same network, 
Therefore, I can type that address, which is often a local address. And therefore, my uh, mobile device will connect to the server running on my laptop, so I can see my see my app on the device. Here, if you're running off of you know your AT&T 3G or whatever, and you've got your computer here, your computer is on our network, and your device is on AT&T, so that address will not work. If I think if you've got your device on our network, you know NCC, what's that? So if your device is on our network and our computer is on our network, then it might work. Although we might have subdomains and all of that, which could get in the way. This is where things get real. You'll need to connect the PhoneGap developer app you installed in step two to the PhoneGap desktop app you've got running. So one more kink right here on number two. You need to download for iOS or Android or Windows Phone the app to your device that will interface with the app on the desktop <coughs> right here. So your app is going to be running on the desktop. You're going to get the app for your device. In the device, you're going to type that address, and then the app will load in the device if you had Windows 8. And then it says, OK, you're going to be running it. You're going to click Connect, and you're going to see the Hello World app running on your device. It might be anticlimactic for us because, again, we don't have Windows 8.1 on these. But what happens behind the scenes is simply you still get a folder with everything. You get a config XML file, and you're still going to need to edit the um, the code as we've been doing before. I get an index file. I can do a quick run of this in Firefox, I think. So I'm running this off of Firefox, not fully completely because we remember in our very first test version of the project a long time ago, when we ran it on our device, it said connecting to device, and then it said device connected. It's not going to exactly function on the web browser because now it assumes it's an actual app. Uh, so it's, it's anticlimactic still. But notice we've got this uh, Cordova. It's still got Cordova in the background, even though this is phone gap. It's all still going back to Cordova. And then the JS file, index file, and all of this is basically is a variation of what we get out of Taco. There's, yeah, the app yeah, just like Taco. When we create a Taco app at the very beginning, it gives us a little bit of basic code so that we can get that Hello World app, just like this Hello World app. So it gives us some basic stuff, and um, we've got our on-device ready. So it's a variation of the code we've looked at before, but it's still this whole on-device ready. And since we're running it off of a web browser, there is no on-device ready event that happens, and therefore this stays on connecting, because it's not a real device. It's a web browser. Uh, in theory, possibly, I could run this I can possibly do taco run browser to possibly get it to work. But the idea here, the way the, the workflow that Adobe wants you to do is you've got the desktop app running, you've got the developer's testing app on your device, you sync the two, and then you work on your code, and it shows up on the device. Yeah, most likely the same thing, sort of taco run, I mean taco emulate Android. Most likely we'd be able to do that too. So it's a different kind of workflow than we've been looking at, but this is another possibility. Again, this is still, this is still in beta 0.31, uh, so they're probably going to keep improving it. Adobe's a big company, 
and everyone wants to jump on the bandwagon of easy mobile apps. But the result is just another HTML, CSS, and JavaScript project, which then we would need to put. Um, we need to. We would need to write our code. And then there's going further, well, what do you do with all of this? Build and package locally using, it's, you're still going to have the command line interface. You're still going to have, to some degree, uh, the command prompt. Or get on phone get build. They're still going to guide you back to that. Uh, you're working on this project. You still need to compile it to the apps. I don't have a real Android to work with. I'm on iPhone. Well, you get on. Uh, build and they will do it for you. Okay, so there's that that's there's that potential way for us to work with with phone gap. Um, uh, to create a project. And we we've been all pretty much in the environment of using Taco all of this time. Uh, Adobe this is like Adobe's version of it. Let me show you some other things here. Um, other other emulators uh, before that. Uh, any, any questions so far? Again, what can we do with this? At the moment, not very much because we don't have Windows 8. But the theory of this is that we would be able to set up our projects and run them quickly on our devices. We would still need some sort of text editor like Notepad++ to actually edit the code and then we've got something to show for it. Yes? Probably. It probably means Windows 8 and up. Mm. Maybe, maybe you want to try it there, Shangdar, and tell us how it's working on your Windows 10. Yeah, our network is always terrible. But anyway, let me show here then. Okay, so we've been using these emulators. Um, we've been using these emulator, the emulator built in. There's a couple of other ones uh, that we can use. Um, we can we can use this emulator called uh, what's the best way? Ripple emulator. If you search Ripple emulator for Google Chrome. We can get this Ripple emulator in beta still years later to um, have a virtual uh, Android or a virtual device, not just Android, but iPhone in your Chrome browser. So if you want to try this for a moment, open Google Chrome and uh, search Ripple emulator. And you should see chrome.google.com. You should see the Chrome web store. So we can apply, so we can get that app. It's a it's a plugin for for Chrome. So if you click on that, it'll take you to the uh, Chrome Web Store. You can see it's pretty popular. Uh, we'll have a little emulator right in, in Chrome that behaves more like a device than an actual web browser because when we go to the developer tools that's still acting like a web browser this is going to act like a device the way you use it is you click on the top right add to Chrome 
it'll then pop up. Do you want to add this extension? Say yes, add the extension. You have a, d a brand new item on the top right corner, the Ripple emulator. Use the extension by clicking the icon and manage your extensions in the Tools menu, which is the three-line menu there. So if you click on that, Ripple Emulator, Enable or Disable, Enable it, and what I will get is the ability to test apps um, right here in the uh, be able to test apps in the in the emulator doing it on mine, but what it's supposed to do is that your Chrome browser now is going to have uh, various controllable elements. You're going to see a device here, different ways to control it, like with GPS and all of that. Did anyone get it up to that point? Let's see, mine is not behaving. Maybe I need to restart my browser. I'm going to restart it. Turn on. Ripple. Okay, here you go. So I had to restart it. Are you ready for this? So Apple, do you want to do this? Um, um, this is the first time we've done it. Please select the platform. So do you want to do this? Uh, you know, with the mobile web using PhoneGap, Cordova, Taco, BlackBerry, WebWorks. Um, I'm going to select Apache Cordova 2.0 for the latest one. And so here, eventually, I get it's still in Chrome, but now it's going to behave like a tablet. In this case, default. So I've got, you know, I've got this as as a tablet view. Uh, on the left it's telling me it's it's Cordova, it's a generic 480 by 800 tablet generic OS. Well, I can uh, go to devices and I have all of these that I can emulate up on devices. So, uh, just to check it out, uh, I'm going to go with a Galaxy, a Nexus Galaxy So I get this Galaxy-esque sized screen running Android 4X from Samsung, 720 by 1280. And I can use this just like um, a real web browser. And load up various addresses. Or if you want to load up our app, we'll, we'll see that in a moment. But, um, How are you the to I had to restart Chrome. I oh, closed yeah, it and opened it, and then it seemed oh, to have behaved. So I'm seeing several bumps here because it's in beta uh, still. But what that's supposed to do is. Um, give you another way to emulate your your apps. I think because I've got the recorder and all of that other overhead. But you can't, you have to be 
Does your app have to have a URL or can you define anything? Exactly. We can still get the we can we can get the address, the file name of, of this. The way I would do it is in your WW folder, you have your index file, right click, open with Chrome. And then in Chrome, turn on Ripple. So if it wants to behave, I'm gonna turn on Ripple. Not yet. I'm trying to enable it, but my system's not quite responsive. But I'm trying to open it. See, you don't need a web a web address. You just need to load that index file in Chrome, like we did it, and then we turn on the emulator here. But mine is not responding. So if you got it to work, great. If not, um, again, this this is uh, a popular, Ripple is popular, but it's still obviously very rough around the edges. Uh, and I've used it here and there, but usually that's why I, I got this $40 device, because I this really is going to help you test it the best. And yes, it's $40, but there's nothing like actually testing on real hardware. Now, I'm not going to go in and invest also on buying... Uh, an iPhone and, and all of that, perhaps. Maybe for that I will use these emulators. But there's always, you're always going to have some lacking, something lacking from these emulators. So my Ripple doesn't quite want to work, but you get the idea. Did you guys get it to work? Um, you can't for a website, but you can for the. Uh, I simply use the extension on the install. Mm -hmm. And then we have the right to the iPhone. Mm -hmm. You click it. But after clicking enable, it doesn't do anything. Same thing with me. Um, there must be something, and it is running the this phone gap test app. So this is uh, one alternative emulator, and when it works, it's great. But let's talk about another one also. This is. I don't know if it's Geni Motion or Jenny Motion. Geni Motion. G E N Y M O T I O N M O U S E. So Geni Motion, and uh, this is another way to emulate. So I just did a search for it. Uh, this is another way to emulate devices. Yes. So G E N Y. It's not to no, no, however I spell it. But it, uh, it found it. So geniemotion.com. It's smarter Yeah. It has, a few, it has a few more megabytes than me. All right. So build and deploy quality apps faster through superior automation and collaboration. So I haven't checked these guys out very recently, uh, but I know that their uh, emulate their Guinea Motion emulator is very uh, popular. It looks like now they've also gone all the way to the route of creating a whole sort of development environment. Um, so <coughs> individual enterprise, basic, free, indie, and all of that. So this is another way to. Uh, do development. I believe these guys, however, focus more on Android development. They might have changed things up. Again, I haven't looked at them very recently. This is just something that I'm guiding you toward in case you want to uh, further further educate yourself. And so I'm seeing um, plugin for Android Studio and Eclipse and so forth.
So that's another thing to look at. I'm not going to go too far into it, but uh, this is another alternative. This one focuses in their own way to do all of this. Um, notice we've got register for our live demo for Guinea Deploy, May 3rd, 1 p.m. CEST. I don't believe that's central time. I think that's in Europe. Sorry, say that again. Can we use the taco commands, you know, to build the app that you know the phone gap created for us? Yes and no. Uh, from what we have right here, I'm gonna give it a shot, but uh, it shouldn't work because it's not actually going to recognize it as a taco project. So, no, it's just that the, the config file and such doesn't specify it as a taco project. So I'm in the project and I'll do taco build. Should fail because it doesn't, um, it wasn't built through taco. So right there, uh, failed, it doesn't recognize it. So, uh, the, the, the yes and the no about it is uh, I can do npm install g phone gap. A while ago we did npm install g taco to give us the taco commands. Because this is a phone gap project, it expects the phone gap command. So if we go through the process of installing phone gap, I will now be able to type phone gap and then type phone gap build, phone gap emulate, rather than okay. taco build, taco emulate. Okay. <clears throat> then we would be very similar to what we have. Yeah, pretty much. So then, if we're going to do it that way anyway in the command prompt, there's not too much point to this, except that you can perhaps quickly see your project on your device if you've got it synchronized. All right, so uh, another alternative to do all of this is, um, as I said, um, Intel has a version of, of doing, of doing um, cross-platform development. And theirs is Intel XDK. If you want to look up Intel XDK, Should take you to software.intel.com slash Intel XDK. Easy path to HTML5 app development. Fast fast path to multi OS app stores. It sounds very similar to what we've already been looking at. This is just a, their variation. It's their version. And whereas we were using um, whereas we were using jQuery Mobile to create an interface, because what Taco and PhoneGap and Build phone gap build, what they're doing is just building a structure for you to be able to go cross-platform. It's still up to you to write your code about your welcome screen and your about button and your database. You still have to do all of that. And we were using jQuery mobile as a tool to develop an interface. That's not the only way. In, if you take Intel's path, they have a variation of jQuery mobile with their own icon set their own button designs, their own, you know, interface, the a look to their apps if you go that way. So this one we, we were not gonna download and use because this is a big download. But here is Intel's variation of it. I mean check this video briefly. Cross-platform dev environment for mobile games or all mobile projects. So Dale is going to tell us all about it, but... Uh, I hate the bash you tell, but I don't really know what your problem is. <laughs> so, <laughs> this... Yeah, they made chips. And, and even their chips have serious problems, but they still the game around. <laughs> so we'll wait for AMD's version. So here, I'm just trying to pause like a screenshot. 
uh, I can't even see it here, but you're you're gonna see a bunch of um, settings and such, and you're it's still Cordova in the background. Everyone's still using Cordova because that's the open source thing that everyone's latching onto. It's just everyone's putting a skin on top of it. But then Intel's version, and so you can select some nice buttons. I want to use this, and I want to use this, and I want to use this. I want to activate the device feature, I want to activate battery. And then I've got a project, and then I've got to develop at the top, emulate, test it, debug it, build it. So their version of this whole process, whereas we did Taco Build Android. Here on XDK, we would go up to the Build tab and click Build It. So instead of doing command prompt, it's a graphical user interface. It's Intel's version, like we saw with Visual Studio. That's the Visual Studio version of doing everything with Taco. Um, this is Intel's way to do it. It's a cross-platform. So you're going to see a lot of documentation on how to do this, and there's their version here. Launch your code via uh, launch your app via QR code. It still requires uh, kind of like what we did with PhoneGap, where okay, you're going to be running your app on your computer in a sort of server, and then you're going to get the, the, the device, the app for the device, and then you're going to synchronize the two. So he's basically showing, he's got his code, HTML code, all of the, all of the usual stuff, so if you can see that, that's just another, another HTML document. Body tags, scripts, and such, with their own specific JavaScript libraries here and there. So, you know, all of that kind of code. And then he's testing it on an, on an iPad or something. And it's just synchronized. So you get a debugger built in, an emulator. You can run it on the devices. It's just Intel's way of doing it. So just another way, another way to go through this whole process. What we learned in this class, obviously, as we've seen, is a viable way to do it. This class could be rewritten to focus on any of these platforms. It's just that each one has a way, a way, a way to do it, a cross-platform way. Because as we said early on, a long time ago, the traditional way is to learn the code of one particular platform, and then you have to learn the code of another platform and another one, and that's a huge endeavor, a big language for every single platform. In the middle, we've got this way, which is cross-platform HTML, phone gap, etc., uh, with its pros and cons. So we won't do very much here, of course, this is a, a huge can of worms, but I wanted to show you that, so we've got NDK. Any questions on that? <laughs> Visual Studio. Azure is for you to do your uh, online apps, their cloud service.